The firehouse shelter opened in December of 1983 and my involvement began in oh, spring probably of 1995. I was attending Shays Valley Presbyterian Church and a member of my church said, I'd like for you to volunteer down at the shelter Friday night. And my first thought was, gosh, uh, I couldn't come up with a good reason to say no, I don't want to go. Uh, I was, I wanted one, I can promise you that, because the idea of actually coming down, staying at a homeless shelter overnight didn't appeal to me. Anyway, I couldn't come up with a reason to say no, so I wandered down here that night, meet Roger Allen, two other guys from Shays Valley Presbyterian Church, and we stayed overnight to host. Uh, and of course, we have a place where we stayed upstairs, the men stayed down, uh, excuse me, the, we'd serve downstairs, then the men would come upstairs, stay in a different area. Um, our duties that night were to pass out towels, uh, wash dishes, get breakfast preparation for the next day. Then we'd go to sleep, wake up at 4.30 the next morning, get all the men up at 5.10 for breakfast, feed everybody. Then everybody would go out on the street at 6 o'clock, the doors would shut. You know, it didn't matter whether it was freezing, didn't matter whether it was burning up, whatever it was, at 6 o'clock the next morning, everybody was out of the building. And um, it's come a long way since then. I uh, began serving on the board of directors in December of 1998, and slowly over the years we been, began acquiring more properties. And with those properties, we were able to follow men through the entire continuum of care in their recovery or in their reintegration or in their reassimilation, however you want to describe that. And now, this building that you see is only one little piece of what the shelter does. Uh, this is the emergency shelter. This is where uh, men who are homeless will come and stay overnight. They'll receive three meals a day. But in addition to that, there's a day program here. There's other things here. There's case managers that follow their uh, each individual man. But in addition to this site, we have a site for uh, homeless mentally ill men. It's the only one like that in the state of Alabama. We have transitional housing programs where once somebody goes to treatment, after they come back, instead of just abandoning them, we have a place where we can follow them with, with case managers. Then after uh, they're in transitional care for a period of time, I think it's 12 months, maybe 24 months, we have permanent supportive housing at different sites also, so where we can also follow them uh, and have case managers assigned to them. So this is just one little bitty piece of the puzzle. It's where it all started. But um, any idea that the firehouse shelter is just warehousing men that's wrong. We're not just putting men on a shelf and abandoning them. We are following men all the way through their recovery. And, uh, you know, where, where once upon a time it was just this little red big brick building, now it's a campus with five or six different sites. I wish I knew the answer to that. I wish I could say, well, I can point to one particular thing. I can't. Uh, the only thing I can say is that I've been here for uh, on the board now for 14 years. Uh, I've watched the ministry progress, and uh, I guess I haven't found a good reason to leave it. There's just there's no reason. I mean, that, that's just one of those old stereotypes that, oh, it's a homeless person. I need to be scared of them for some reason. Yeah, you know, I can remember in 1984, 83, I guess it was, I went to uh, New York with the University of Alabama Law School and would see homeless people and think, and we point, say, look, there's homeless people. It, it didn't even occur to me back at that time that the problem was real and existent in, in Birmingham. Uh, but we, it, it was almost like it was a different species of human being. Mm -hmm. And uh, gosh, that, that kind of uh, bigotry for, for less than, uh, for I have no other term to describe it, uh, it's just insane. I mean, Steve has this, our executive director, Steve Freeman, has the statistics. The homeless people are more often, more frequently the uh, victims of violent crime than the perpetrators by far and away. Uh, there's nothing to be scared of. Um, you know, we'll sit in church and we hear how we're supposed to do things for the poor and we'll acknowledge that and then we leave church and go on about our business for the rest of the week and kind of forget about all that. Mm -hmm. Well, this is an opportunity not to forget about all that. Calvin Futch, one of the founders of the shelter, told me years ago, one of the guys that was around when it was founded, said, you know, really when um, GBM came up with the idea of this, the whole idea was to get people out of the pews and into the fields where you could actually do something with your faith. Uh, you know, the old axiom, faith without works is dead. 
well, here's an opportunity right here, right behind me. And um, nothing to be scared of. And the benefits for these men are just wonderful. And the benefits for me in uh, getting out of myself and actually having to do something for somebody else have been extraordinary also. Our executive director, Steve Freeman, has done a marvelous job in the transition of this facility from an overnight shelter to an organization that follows men through every aspect of their recovery. And the one thing that I would want anybody to take away when they see this building is that this is just a starting point. And the end point, hopefully, is that uh, someone who at one time was homeless, wandering the streets, didn't have a place to stay at night, didn't have food to eat, is gainfully employed, nice good taxpayer like you and me, even owns their own home. And we have those success stories. That's actually happened. That's not a pipe dream anymore. And uh, Steve's vision has been integral to that, from just this old red brick building to a, a phenomenal system that follows people all the way through the continuum of care. Hopefully, Hopefully, and I'm going to point straight down the road, uh, we have a site that we purchased several years ago. Uh, all we need now is a little bit of money to get the thing built. It's, it's difficult economic times. You know, everybody recognizes that, but um, we envision a facility that would allow us to do a whole lot more under one roof and provide greater services to the people that we serve and hopefully get them through uh, whatever issues that they're having more quickly and get them, get them back out doing, uh, you know, what the rest of us in society are doing, uh, working, paying taxes, uh, raising families, being good husbands, being good fathers. Um, you know, we're seeing it already. We're seeing it already, but we'd be able to do it much more efficiently if we could move into a new facility, which would be about eight blocks straight down this road. Uh, you know, the old axiom, faith without works is dead. Well, here's an opportunity right here.